Mobsters, welcome back. Um, today we're talking Cobb Caballo Malaway, the White Ghost. We're approaching springtime here in the Western Cape, so with spring, the water uh, color will start changing, the water temperature will change, uh, with the southeast starting to blow. There's four species of cob in the south, in and around the South African coast. You have the square tail, you will have the snapper cob, the silver cob, which is mostly most common species in and around the Western Cape, and then you have the dusky cob. Now the dusky cob is the biggest one of the lot, followed by the silver. Now, if we talk conditions, conditions, you want the southeast to blow, preferably the second or third day, you like a bit of a murky water, not too dark, not too light, you definitely don't want clear conditions, even though you might pick them up here and there, especially the dusky, uh, but you prefer a bit of color to the water, and I say color is almost like a milky, dirty color. Uh, water temperature, anything from 16 upwards to 19, they don't like the 21, 23, degree water, it gets too hot for too long and then they also disappear and they become quite skittish to, to, to go on to the bite. Um, yeah, so they are a species that prefer feeding at night, even though most of us target them during the day. Um, the dusky being the biggest one is uh, famous anywhere from Agalas coast upwards, uh, when I say upwards, east towards the KZN and the silver, I think I've mentioned it, it's more towards the west coast. Now, the bag limits, bag limits, you're allowed to have five, uh, five of the minimum length of 50 centimeters, anything west from Agalas Lighthouse. And when you move towards the east from the Agalas Lighthouse, the minimum size is 60 and one per person. When it says bag limit, it means in possession. So you can catch one a day and you can keep it. But if you catch another one tomorrow, it means you, in, you have two in your possession. So ideally, uh, you need to only have one in your possession. Okay, let's talk baits. Dead bait, live bait. Live bait, mullet. Dead bait, you have an option of quite a few. You have choker, you have octopus leg, you have pulcher. You also have uh, two very special baits that I, if I can get hold of, I do prefer. That's your strepi and also your shad, elf, or tailor. That's a deadly bait. If there is cob in the water, they will not leave it alone. I promise you that. Another tip is to use fresh, fresh bait. The fresher the bait, the more likely you'll get a hook up. Like I said, if the cob is in the water, they, could, they simply can't resist. Nice fleshy meat with lots of flavor, lots of oil, always do the trick when they're in the area. Uh, when it comes to traces, uh, I make use of the 5 to 7 o BKK inline or the Trident. A nice thin hook, nice hookup, easy to release the fish with the least possible damage. Um, the 5 to 7 i I'll only use for the silver cob, so anything west from Agalas Lighthouse, I would prefer using that. And also smaller baits that I tend to use. East from the Lighthouse, you'll find the Dusky Cobs. So our, they actually get far bigger than the silver. Um, so for them, I'll use a minimum of an 8, 9, even a 10, depending on where I'm targeting. Um, but yeah, they do tend to prefer a bigger hook. And it's just easier to make ensure that the hookup stays tight and you don't lose the fish. Um, with the movement of the water and the fighting the fish, the fish has got a, quite a soft mouth and it will create a gap or a hole and the hook can actually come out as they turn and they run. Uh, remember to play your cob not too tight because of that. Okay, now I'll show you my hook trace. I prefer using anything from a 0.65 to 0.75 for the hook trace. Here's my inline BKK. I apply the snell knot. I think I've shown you this in a previous tackle chat. my snow knot cut off the tag end and I'll make use of my three-way swivel and I use the Palomar knot 
a lot more knots I've shown in a previous video. You can go and have a look on the channel. Very strong. Definitely won't break off. There we go. Again, tag, cut off the tag end. And then the famous Maxima Green I will use for my uh, Maxima Ultra Green. I use for my lead. I use anything from the 12 to the 16 kilo. Nice and strong because we're casting mostly along sandy reefs, banks. So I'd like to keep my lead. Go. Again, using the Pelham or not. Cut off the tag end. There we go. Here is my carp trace. PKK inline with my snarl knot and my three way swivel. And then you can decide if you're going to use a dangle. Dingle dangle is designed to create movement in the water. Because it's got a, it's a foam substance, it tends to move around and won't go and lie on the bottom of the ocean. Quite important to keep your bait a little bit above the ocean bed, even though carp do tend to eat quite shallow. Um, but the movement is crucial because of the lateral line they do tend to attack based on sight. That's why they hide in the murky water so that if a uh, bait or a little fish comes along they can attack. Okay guys that brings us to the end of another tackle chat. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope I, it helped a little bit. Hope some of the tips can pay off when you're stuck in a rut and you're trying to hook up to that nice cob. Um, listen it's all just my opinion and things that I've learned and use over the time and uh, it's not it's not a must it's not uh, you know the only way to do it there's a thousand different videos out there to show you different bait presentations and opinions this is just me this is what i use and uh in the next month two three four months you'll start seeing those cob videos come through hopefully um but yeah so now you'll know what i'll be using and i'll target them remember the silver i downscale to my five to seven o's and the duskies I'll go and target using my 7 to 9 O's. So if you see me out there and I hook up, you'll know what I've used. And uh, maybe you can try it out and it can work for you. There will be a video coming soon. Now the trip we had recently to Gouritz, uh, that video will show you what to do when the fish are scarce. So if you ever in a situation where you're struggling to find fish, the weather's not lacquer. Go and have a look at the video. Might be one or two tips for you. Lagger boys, keep it real. Check you soon.